afternoon and namaskar to each one present here we extend a very warm welcome on behalf of the amity business school family we thank you for taking out time and joining us virtually for the fourth session of the mega international lecture series which is envisioned as the curtain raiser to our main event global leadership research conference 2022 In this series of international lectures of academic stalwarts, after a stellar opening and three luminary sessions from our academic stalwarts who shared their fathomless knowledge and acumen to enlighten all present, we thank Honorable Founder President Dr. Ashok K. Chauhan Sir, Honorable Chancellor Amity University Uttar Pradesh, and President Dr. Atul Chauhan Sir. and honorable vice chancellor amity university uttar pradesh dr balvinder shukla ma'am who gave us the platform to conduct this event we would like to welcome professor dr sanjeev bansal sir dean faculty of management studies and director of amity business school we would request professor dr anupama rajesh ma'am head of internationalization cell and professor at amity business school to say few words about mega international lecture series uh you know ivan and uh, our uh, professor ivan and all our respected uh, guests here are very respected dean um i'm going to start with an urdu couplet and ivan i'll translate for you in a minute it says main akela hi chala tha par sang mein karwa ho chala translated it means that i decided to walk alone and by the time i started there was a huge set of people with me now why am i quoting it is because uh, what began with a very small idea in respected dean's office he just gave a mandate that why don't you get you have so many international friends and all our faculty including dr ahuja has so many international friends why don't we call them and so that all our students gain from them and it was just something and uh, now not only have we already had about six lectures we are looking at many more um, if i can just have the so i have tom coming from he's a uh, he's the uh, director for center of student engagement i've got peter stokes coming i have uh, so many others um, lined up and not only uh, and simon coming in professor dana coming in but not only this year we are booked on till i mean i'm already getting calls and uh, it has been so successful we are uh, on so much on media and social media and uh, so much everywhere that i've got uh, people actually now saying that we they want to be part of this so i'm i have a feeling i'm booked up till next december with the kind of emails that are coming in to be part of this so but um, uh, thank you so much for being with us and uh, thank you dr auja for uh, being that very important link with ivan where we can always get ivan to talk about such important things to our students and over to you thank you Based on that, today joining with us is the renowned academic Professor Ivan Kostemener, Sir of Schema Business School, France. Now we invite our Honorable Dean of Faculty of Management Studies, Director and Head of Amity Business School, Professor Dr. Sanjeev Bansal, Sir, to welcome our esteemed guest with a sapling as a token of our culture here at Amity and expression of our gratitude. so on behalf of the respected dean uh, uh, professor uh, ivan uh, we are absolutely um, you know uh, delighted and honored by your presence welcome sir for amit to amity business school thank you ma'am thanks a lot you know i you can count on me no worry absolutely you know that thank you Now I would request Dr. Vandana Hooja, ma'am, to please introduce Dr. Evan sir to us. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's talk about Dr. Evan now. A profound scholar and a professional par excellence, Professor Evan is the founder and scientific director of MSc Luxury and Fashion Management at Schema Business School, and has contributed significantly to the field of luxury brand management. Over four decades of his career, he has followed a dedicated and networked approach 
towards the global development of luxury branding. He is widely respected for having created academic programs in luxury branding and has launched eight organizations in this sector. As a board member of the Association of Economic, Social and Environmental Council of the French Republic, his social contributions have been widely recognized and appreciated. He has successfully led numerous national and international NGOs. He is the chairman of the Regional Olympic Committee of France and is known for his pioneering work in sports and youth affairs. We extend a very warm welcome to you, Professor Ivan. Over to you, Dr. Anupama and team now. I don't know who you were talking about, Vandana, so uh, nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Yeah. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. The platform is all yours, sir. You can continue. I've got the right to share now. Absolutely, absolutely. OK, so let me do it like this. And like that. Wishing you could see. Yes, we can. Yeah. We can. No, I, I will be putting on, on my second uh, on my second computer in the meantime so that I can be getting the your feedback on your uh, in the meantime. OK, yes. Definitely. And in case we need to have some uh, just don't know chats or so on, I will be typing with the other one. OK, so uh, first of all, many thanks again for for such a great opportunity as you as I've been mentioning it with my uh, typical bad jokes. Uh, definitely a friend of yours uh, and my pride to be uh, to be close to you. Uh, knowing uh, the uh, Vandana and uh, Anupama is uh, much more than my pleasure. Um, we are definitely friends. Same for Sanji, for uh, Shubham and so on. And um, as mentioned, I, I will be trying my best to be close to you uh, next February for the GRC. Uh, because uh, I completely uh, miss this and uh, having more opportunities to be sharing, discussing with your beloved students uh, within the campus and definitely not with this kind of uh, hybrid thing, which is replacing only 50 to 60 percent of sharing and pedagogy. So this day I've been selecting a, a topic, not because I'm um, kind of shy with my supposed to be expertise. I still love luxury. Uh, but I would like you to be to be remembering how I've been um, joining this word, uh, which is for some of you kind of uh, shining and uh, glittering, but uh, which is uh, as always starting with people, ending with people, and on the way we need to be having technology and craftsmanship and many kind of uh, goodwill or know-hows which could be uh, leveraging everything. And knowing the fact India is currently uh, should be considered as being the number one leading country in the gemstone industry and especially when it comes to dealing with cutting, shaping, polishing and so on. Um, as an example, diamonds today for 80 percent of them are currently cut and polished in uh, in Mumbai. I was willing you to be opening an eye to what's coming next and uh, what kind of luxury we should be depicting for the for your generation and the people who will be following. The number one axiom is in 2050, all evaluations are clearly depicting the fact we should be having no more diamond uh, being uh, exploitable, uh, no more mine uh, able to be furnishing diamonds. So the one only question which is to be stuck to this is, will diamonds be lasting forever? Are they there um, to be changing themselves? And sorry, any product, even the most luxurious of, uh, of all, should be already having some kind of implementations or improvements. And this is something which has been um, starting, uh, let's say around 2002, when uh, the De Beers company, which is the current leader in diamond extraction, has been suddenly discovering uh, things could be becoming much more sustainable. So in fact, my, the selection of this topic is how to combine twin um, something which we could be considering as being green bashing. I mean, everybody is talking today about sustainability, but nobody is really taking care about it. And uh, are there some uh, industries, some uh, product categories for which 
we are able right now to be combining both a, a complete sustainable approach and uh, while keeping on preventing the luxury perception on the consumer side from becoming kind of floaty, um, mass market driven, lousy even, okay? So uh, I want to talk about lab grown diamonds and for that aim I've been uh, asking one of my beloved Indian students to be to be part of the game. The other one I've been sending him in Tanzania and he's been working in mines for something like four months in order to be extracting diamonds, rubies and uh, Tanzanites so that they could be having uh, this kind of um, double way of thinking, uh, uh, two ways approach to uh, the evolution of the luxury gemstone industry and uh, about the um, the vital um, consumers shift uh, in terms of behavior we need to be either leading or we need to be listening to uh, if the customers are already having the enough knowledge in order to be uh, to be asking for more so my presentation will be um, let's say as always lacking structure but that is uh, definitely not my aim my aim is definitely to be making you um, knowing what's coming next, what kind of market we are to be uh, facing, what kind of technological improvements, uh, easy to, to find because I'm, I'm an engineer, um, what kind of impact on the, the prices, the distribution, the retail activities and uh, also on the customer value and maybe on the resale um, activities, which kind of alternative innovations can we be finding there, how to combine the now uh, definitely well-known carbon footprint evolution analysis discussion and political uh, regulations which might be happening the big issue there is uh, which kind of impact will it have uh, will it be generating on the on the people who are currently working for the traditional extraction of the of the gemstones and especially for most of them in South America and in Africa uh, along the Rift Valley. I mean the full eastern uh, facade of the uh, African territories from uh, let's say Ethiopia to South Amer uh, Africa. And then which kind of uh, advices which will be making us uh, understanding a little bit more about the gap which is currently existing between the current consumers and the next coming ones uh, might be definitely falling in love with this kind of new luxury industry. So first, um, the and that's not the one and only company, but uh, one company you might be checking uh, for by the end of this uh, small presentation is the, the one which has been developed by Advanced Technology. So from a definition point of view, don't mix up uh, what we call synthetic diamonds and lab grown diamonds. Um, when we are to be um, to be thinking in terms of high hand jewelry, we need to perform at the lab in the lab uh, the the craziest techniques and to be improving them at uh, at their best. Because right now we are currently having an already existing classifications typologies for all kinds of gemstones, and especially when dealing with diamonds, this one is let's say led by the GIA, the Gemologic Institute of America. Even if in Paris, in uh, Mumbai, in Tel Aviv and in Antwerp, we may be having other classifications, but from a, a worldwide standard point of view, the American market has always been leading the uh, this uh, world with something like more than 50% of the global uh, cash flow, worldwide yearly cash flow, uh, currently uh, keeping on being achieved in the US. So the GIA, the Gemologic Institute of America, once again, is definitely the the ranking and the definition we we need to um, to match. So as always, we are talking about purity, uh, clarity, uh, and the quality itself. Uh, the big issue for for this is to be also finding a stone which would be a little bit cheaper. Uh, right now, it's not definitely a success. We are only able to be performing something like minus thirty percent. And uh, to be uh, sure about having bigger and bigger stones, which are for most of them completely uh, disappearing from Earth. Then the misinterpretation for the definition is synthetic diamonds. You, I'm sure you know them. Uh, the lowest of the um, of the FMCG word. For example, these are the ones which we are currently using for drilling, 
for cutting tiles. Uh, so diamonds at a synthetic level have always been a thing, but there we definitely uh, were not aware about uh, needs in terms of quality, clarity and so on. And uh, for the price uh, thing, that was definitely easy. Knowing the fact, everything which we are using for do-it-yourself uh, activities can be uh, overcharged with definitely uh, something like 200% extra additional operational margin when reaching the final consumers. Then uh, a big education problem, uh, let's say the, the lack of awareness which is currently existing on the consumers. I'm sure most of the ladies who are currently listening to us would not be so much loving the idea on the day of their weddings, they could be getting a ring with synthetic diamonds or lab grown diamonds. So from a, a sensitivity point of view, this is a complete one generation evolution in terms of behavioral pattern uh, shifts. Uh, the second issue is to be dealing with authenticity, but this is not so much my fear. Knowing the fact, authenticity has always been at the heart of this, uh, let's say, natural diamond activity. Uh, from the very uh, big issues when the USSR was selling uh, stones at 40% lower than the uh, the real uh, average price on the on the market, just in order to be getting dollars and uh, to be preventing the ruble from uh, going down. Then with uh, grey markets, parallel importations and let's say even blood diamonds as you could be uh, seeing them on uh, during some movies, but uh, especially when they were to be coming from heavily corrupted countries like uh, Sierra Leone, Angola and so on. So uh, we are dealing with a, a product which is very expensive, which is definitely unfair. So that's the reason why uh, it is definitely time to be generating a new fair market with this uh, so that uh, both the miners but also the, the living inhabitants within the, in the production regions could be having some kind of uh, better protections and a much better CSR driven way to be thinking about their lives. Then the, the least question there would be uh, should it be should we be considering this as being a a definitive alternative material um, and which kind of profile could be buying this. So if we are only focusing on people my age willing to look fairer than what they are, uh, I'm not sure the, the market will be expanding. The, the real market today and the real targeted one is the so-called Gen Z one. Uh, so working well in, uh, especially in China right now, uh, working well again uh, in Europe, thanks to uh, people who used to be working for the the most prestigious companies like uh, Audemars Piguet in the watch industry or uh, uh, Van Cleef uh, Chopar in the jewelry uh, sector, who have been incorporating their own companies, who are selling them uh, with their own brands and they are contributing to the launching of uh, new small companies, let's call them niches companies even, um, who are specially devoted to uh, one specific profile of consumers. Um, and if I want to be definitely cynical, the the most or let's say the craziest profile I know with this is a company which is located in Hong Kong whose name is Hope, uh, which is currently manufacturing lab grown diamonds, which you can be making thanks to the ashes of your uh, former living, uh, formerly living husband or wife or even with the hashes which you could be getting when you will be burning your best love pet. Uh, there we are already calibrating the diamonds to the size which are asked for by the, the consumers. We can even be calibrating the kind of colors and so on. Then you can be easily guessing when we are to be skipping a generation, we also need to be having this kind of uh, cool, smooth evolution which will be driven by both marketing and communication activities and not only uh, talking about uh, social medias, even if we were to be uh, luckier and to be easierly, uh, fun easier funding uh, some ways to be reaching such targets. Uh, the global uh, traditional communication is also part of the of the game. Uh, I'm definitely sure if the bears have not been starting to be uh, promoting by means of advertising from 1880 uh, till today, 
uh, at the B2B level, then for sure no one would be keeping on buying diamonds like this. And uh, this is not only uh, uh, a certitude, it's also due to the fact we have been listening to a beautiful song which is clearly stating diamonds are rare, but sorry, on Earth today we're having gemstones or semi-precious gemstones which are much rarer than um, diamonds, which are definitely not having the same feeding ratio or seduction ratio on the consumer side. I think about uh, Alexandrite or uh, Tanzanite, which can be something like uh, one million times rarer than diamonds and which should uh, be having much more um, attractions and seductions on the consumer side. And then my last, uh, my last thing, I've been mentioning this, we are to be targeting the, the next generation of consumers, the one which you are uh, part of. So how does it work and um, is it difficult to make? First answer, yes, it's really difficult, even if the process is kind of quite simple. In fact, we just use uh, some carbon powder. Uh, and uh, if you've been reading the first sentence with the carbon footprint, you can already be thinking about people working in order to be recycling the CO2, which is currently existing above Noida or inside the atmosphere, in order to be generating diamonds or out of that. It is already existing. Uh, and the, uh, the big, um, let's see, uh, main way to be getting these lab-grown diamonds consists in high pressure, high temperature processes. So kind of cool autoclave. We just put powder in, uh, in it. We just increase the pressure and the temperature. And then upon cooling, we are um, able to be making what nature has been doing within the Rift Valley at the end of the volcano uh, area in order to be making this uh, beautiful crystallization occurring, knowing the fact crystals are, are difficult to make in nature, but they are much easier and quicker to make by hands. And uh, the, the big issue with there is to be having a full control of the manufacturing process in order to be cooling uh, at uh, the speed we want, uh, uh, for the color we want, the size we want, and even the quality we want. So um, definitely, uh, a kind of God's way of thinking while making uh, carbon becoming diamonds. And then we are having another one which is um, much easier, but uh, we are having, uh, we are not able yet to be reaching normal size. Normal size to me uh, start above one carat, uh, one carat sorry, being zero to grams. Uh, with the CVD, which consists in uh, vaporizing carbon, we can be having the, what uh, we call a sublimation, and then upon uh, condensation and uh, recrystallization, we will be getting smaller, very pure uh, diamonds. Um, but in this case, we don't have any ability to be changing their colors. We don't have any um, tool enabling us to be putting some metallic ions in, in order to be turning the diamonds to red or yellow or blue. So uh, all of them are colorless lab-grown diamonds, smaller, very pure, and I would even be saying much purer than what uh, what the uh, what nature has been able to be doing uh, thousands of years uh, before. So the big issue, as you can be getting it, is a complete branding um, exercise, uh, and um, also how to be completely proofing to consumers. We are having a complete circular virtual um, virtual um, buckle. We don't focus on only one parameter in order to be using the lousy green bashing uh, communication. So a full 360 degrees analysis of everything which could be considered as being completely sustainable by essence. So there you're having two pictures for two diamonds, one which is the natural one. So let's call it the bio, the organic one. Uh, coming from a mine, and then the other one, which is a lab-grown diamond. And as you can see, it's much more than difficult. Sorry, there's no difference uh, to be analyzing them with all the different parameters which we need to keep in mind and to take in account on a normal base. So the chemical composition is exactly the same, 100% pure carbon. The crystallization structure and matrix is also alike. 
the refractive index is the same, the dispersion is the same, the hardness is 10, there's no stone harder than, uh, than diamond, and the density is completely e equivalent. So the big issue will be to be um, playing with this kind of consumer value driven approach or the perception on the consumer side. It's really a matter of positioning, branding. Uh, how can we be um, making people getting this in mind? Synthetic diamonds, because they are sustainable, should be consist uh, considered as uh, depicting exactly the same values uh, when uh, worn on, uh, on a ring or on uh, any kind of jewel. Uh, on the both the male and the female side. So the quality and the quantity improvements, uh, both in terms of uh, sizes of the stones and in terms of expansion of the markets, we can't be staying at the low level with one carat. We can't be saying uh, it's sustainable if we don't start by luxury. Sorry for that. It's uh, something I want you to to be sure about, if we are not able to be uh, selling at a high price, thanks to luxury products, sustainability, nobody at a lower level with lower operational margins will have enough money uh, enabling the company to be improving all its processes so that the company could be becoming sustainable in a close future. Luxury is a crazy um, word where we are selling crazy products to crazy people. And these crazy people are, by uh, definition, able to, to be paying, overpaying. So the return on invest, well, which we are to focus on uh, when dealing with sustainable activities, is definitely um, at the at the center, at the heart of the decisions to be taken by the by the world for any kind of industry. So starting with luxury is enabling you to be having a shorter, faster return on invest, which we can't be finding when we are to be shifting from uh, uh, using pesticides and rice production to a full organic one when the yields are flattening, and especially when consumers are not so much likely to be accepting to be uh, paying or overpaying 30% extra just because it's uh, supposed to be sustainable. So uh, luckily we had some uh, big companies, uh, so the Russian one, New Diamond Tech, then uh, De Beers, which is depending on how we are focusing on the company, either South African or American, uh, with GE, which uh, all of you, you should be knowing, we have been making these first uh, colored lab-grown diamonds. And that has been a, a wonderful step um, ahead. Knowing the fact uh, colored diamonds are much rarer than lab, uh, sorry, organic diamonds, we can consider the colored diamonds as representing less than 1% of the global yearly production where we are extracting the stones. So it's really a matter of uh, statistics, um, very low statistic um, approach, much more a matter of uh, Poisson's law than a matter of Gauss law in terms of distribution. Very um, numerous companies have been joining, so you've got the, the list of them. Um, we are at that level close to the NASA or to the Formula One uh, in terms of technology. So it will be the second trouble to be solving. Can we be uh, pre preserving the luxury perception on consumer science? If we are injecting too much technology, I mean, if a machine is able to be making something, uh, what will we be respecting more? Will we be respecting uh, something which has been made by hands, by uh, someone who was definitely uh, a hand craftsman uh, at the highest level? Or do we accept to be getting the same kind of product, even if we know it has been made by 3D printing things or uh, let's say, uh, relevant uh, other tools. Today, uh, to keep in mind uh, the, the big improvements, uh, I've just been uh, listing the different um, new patents which just got released. As you could be guessing, uh, the Chinese people are there. Sorry, there's no Indian um, patent there, even if India is still currently the number one leading country for the diamond production. Um, it's time for India to, to wake up, uh, knowing the fact China is definitely um, getting uh, involved in this market and is definitely willing to produce in China 
that would be making their own currencies staying in the country. So no more protector, protectionism. You produce on uh, on the spot. There's no stocking uh, inventory charges to be um, to be taken in account. And you are definitely sticking to the offer and the demand so that you can be playing with all kinds of uh, speculations and uh, establishing the real price. So that's a definitive political will of the of the Chinese uh, government. Uh, I would like the I would suggest the Indian uh, Parliament to be uh, thinking about this because it's uh, it's really a big fight, and it would be making a, a great loss in uh, in India, especially in Mumbai area. Then we are having the colors and the way to change them. As I've been telling it to you, um, in fact, the uh, the colors as we see them are definitely once again something which is a definitive uh, reflection of a rare event which has been happening, a kind of uh, let's say Fukushima's effect in the world of uh, crystallization. So I can be turning a ruby from red to another color. Diamonds can be existing in all kinds of colors. So we can have green diamonds and they are not emeralds, pink or uh, red diamonds and they are not rubies as we can be having blue uh, sapphire, but also red or yellow or pink sapphire. So this kind of uh, color is also changing the scarcity um, distribution, which is also uh, one of the of the main pillars and parameters to keep in mind when we are to be discussing about diamonds and uh, above all about luxury products, scarcity, the marketing of the lack and definitely not the marketing of the demand with a complete uh, avalanche diffusion model to be taken in account, which has nothing to do with, once again, a Gaussian distribution. The key question there would be, uh, with a bad joke, how big do you want your stone? If you want a really big one, sorry, the cheapest is made out of glass, out of crystal, and you know the name of the company, that's Swarovski. If you want a big uh, diamond, then um, you don't care about quality and you're only looking for the outlook, bling bling, uh, reflective uh, positioning of the consumer. So a kind of, uh, let's say, Kim Kardashian's uh, reaction. And then if you're looking for something which is smaller, but much better in terms of quality and above all in changes of colors, then you will be looking for something which is rarer than rare for which the marketing of Lerac will be uh, driving and leveraging all prices and distribution or even branding processes which might be considered there, uh, making these, uh, these kind of stones um, among right now among those which are the most easily resold, uh, kind of Danish way of thinking when you're able to be selling back your jewelries uh, with 30% uh, off only if you're buying the next generation of jewels made by uh, your beloved Tata Group. So these colored lab-grown diamonds, we just add a few spices, let's say masala in the in carbon, a bit of uh, chrome or uh, nickel, and then you will be turning to uh, red, a bit of uh, boron, and then you will be turning to blue. And then we, we can be playing with all shades of colors uh, so that there's already a new market which is coming up, people who are coming asking for their own specific diamonds. So when I've been discovering this uh, last year, I was kind of amazed, let's say, and I'm very polite until now, uh, but um, I could be remembering some of my uh, um, Sikh friends in India. When I've been visiting some temples and especially the Golden Temple uh, with them, asking me to be buying a ring uh, when talking to palmist first. And this is definitely what the, these stones and the, the evolution of this market is following. Some people are not so much knowing about what they want uh, and are so much already forgetting about the brands and the submission to a kind of um, power of the brand, a kind of uh, how to play, uh, uh, how to pledge allegiance to a, a specific brand. They come to the high-end jewelry, they ask for a specific stone, a specific color, a specific shape, a specific cut, uh, and there, there's only one stone which can be existing uh, like this on Earth, and maybe they will be queuing for years before finding it. So lab-grown diamonds from a technological point of view is helping us uh, to, be, uh, to be finding the stone people want. 
to be uh, predicting before and to be achieving definitely what has been uh, sold or presented to uh, to the people who were to be uh, to be buying it making us deciding about the size the shape the color the grading of the color and uh, even uh, about the reflection of the light when it will be uh, uh, the final deal how to cut the stone in order to be getting the best uh, the best of it so the common colors for fancy are now uh, the yellow the pink the orange and uh, of course it's uh, something which is uh, an additional market to what was uh, existing uh, let's assume when you see people with such rings, they, they are definitely uh, showing a, a fashionable way in, the, in the, the field, which has nothing to do with the traditional diamonds, the way your granddad and grandmom used to be buying them uh, for some specific occasions. Let's talk about money now. Uh, one thing I love with this is for once in our lives, uh, the world can be buying diamonds at a cheaper price while uh, till the Lagrone diamond discovery and the uh, diamonds were sold with a complete speculative approach of it. Um, De Beers has been having a kind of monopoly for something like 100 years. Uh, they have been owning mines in, uh, in most of the countries where we can be extracting uh, stones, whether in uh, Botswana, Namibia, uh, Tanzania, or South, America, uh, South Africa or even Canada. And today we are able to be producing diamonds everywhere in the world. And the starting price now is something like 20 to 30 percent off, uh, which is making it, I would say, quite affordable. But also uh, knowing the fact these prices will be going down uh, very fast when the production will be um, speeding up and uh, matching uh, the the expectations and the demands on the consumer side. So it is a market driving approach, but one thing is sure, the market driven approach might be coming within the five coming years, and this is already the case in uh, in China. So much more favorable to consumers. <coughs> then the other thing is investing in companies like this is definitely, uh, let's say, easy. The, the investment for such thing is uh, lower than uh, 2 million euros while for a specific mine. The least concessions which have been ruled by auctions and concessions uh, uh, have been uh, reaching more than 500 million. So let's say anybody can be today launching its own jewelry company, jewelry brand. And that's the reason why, again, uh, I've been uh, thinking about presenting this to you in India. Uh, after so many students who have been launching their own activities in that jewelry sector. The big issue right now is the value of the time. And sorry, we don't have enough feedback for that. So we, we just don't know uh, how fast the value for a second hand uh, lab grown diamond could be falling down. And uh, there uh, we are having a, a big problem uh, for, for most of us. A top leading luxury product is something which is uh, following a kind of collector's reaction chain, uh, chain reaction, um, knowing the fact when we resell something which is definitive luxury, prices are going up and definitely not going down the way cars are doing. So uh, right now, these lab grown diamonds, when resold, are losing an extra 20 which is the big uh, the big fight and the one and only answer will be to be shortening the production which could be uh, resulting in once again an unfair activity and uh, definitely not something which could be considered as uh, sustainable technology is still evolving and we are running right now on a, a new patent for the nasa in order to be having cutting and drilling uh, surgery uh, tools uh, there we need to be having very, very thin diamonds, top level purity. And if we are able to be having a, a multi-layer crystallization, then uh, the, that would be the biggest diamonds ever made by, uh, by human beings. Uh, you've got the one sentence I love over the long term, the difference in price becomes less significant and the difference in value becomes more significant. So once again, you've got my perception. Uh, I wish it's also getting yours, becoming yours. The value is definitely uh, the most uh, the most important parameter we need to focus on. Don't forget the traditional GIA thing. And so the, the qualification and the ranking of the stones 
as uh, led by the four C's, the cut, the carat, the color, the gravity. Uh, so the carats, I mentioned it, it's zero two grams. And I would add, uh, we would add, uh, because we, we have been doing this being three, the fifth uh, C, which is comment. How to teach to the sales forces and to the distribution. Uh, the minimalist credo, which could be proofing to the generation when you buy a lab grown diamond, okay, it's a real diamond and it's not something which is um, low grade just because of the fact it has been made by human beings. In other words, sustainability there is really uh, at the core uh, of the, uh, let's say, of the essence of the market. Alternative even innovations, I've been mentioning already the surgery uh, micro tools. So you've got almost everything, uh, medical detectors, computers, tech, transmission of light, uh, magnifying lenses, uh, and uh, some even uh, already existing glasses, uh, which we can be putting on frames because it's uh, one of the best uh, glass, if I can be comparing diamond to glasses. Not forgetting the carbon footprint, uh, which is uh, to be added to the CSR positioning um, when we are to be uh, eradicating the, the, bad, um, the bad manners, the employees and the labor are being treated within the mines. Uh, you've got the two, let's say, the optimistic and the pessimistic approach of the two uh, main surveys which have been led in order to be clearly proofing lab-grown production is uh, preventing carbon uh, emissions to be uh, going up. And uh, the, the big issue I've been mentioning uh, while presenting my agenda, the uh, the fear to be having some extra people, let's say, on the dole, and I'm uh, once again very politically correct, in countries where corruption has been making this becoming a kind of uh, gas which was fueling the economy, uh, which is uh, otherwise never uh, considered as being a real economy. So the carbon footprint, you've got the example I've been mentioning with the Aether uh, Corporation, which is uh, using the CO2 air uh, recycling CO2 here uh, treatment uh, in order to be creating some uh, lab grown diamonds. So uh, I'm not predicting diamonds will be collapsing from the earth because everybody will have one, but kind of uh, within 50 years, it might be uh, that kind of uh, thing. It's one of the easiest stone to, to make. Um, much more difficulties today in making again emeralds and rubies. So the battle for image, uh, you get it, the must have because of scarcity. And if we are uh, impacting on scarcity, will it be staying almost stable in terms of uh, attraction, uh, wishing all the uh, physical chemical parameters which are surrounding the activities in the gemstones could be staying at the same level. Uh, how to inject ethical sustainable uh, in every uh, jewelry sector as uh, Shubham was mentioning, Stella McCartney, that has been the case in the fur industry. And uh, today we can even be making a vegan laser out of grapes, out of uh, collagen, out of pineapple. So um, that's the, the big fight within the 520 uh, coming years in order to be building up a new virtual circle, a real one, uh, which has nothing to do with uh, fighting against uh, smugglers. Uh, the way it has been for uh, the past century. I think I'm almost done uh, with everything I was willing to discuss uh, or to present before the discussion. Uh, the, uh, the other uh, new uh, vocabularies to be used, used by the sales forces, uh, renewable energies, sorry, that was definitely not uh, the kind of language we used to be listening to when uh, visiting a, a jeweler. Uh, the other thing uh, dealing with the, the recycling of water and all kinds of typical sustainable uh, words or uh, facets in order to be uh, having a certified sustainable diamond the way we used to be having uh, be before uh, before them with the bears and the uh, and the non-blood diamond certificate which were uh, forged by the United Nations. Done with everything. I've been checking my time. You said 45. That was 43. For once, I'm on time. 
Ivan, it has been such a pleasure to hear you. And uh, also because I learned a lot. Uh, I would just need to go back home and check all my engagement and other jewelry that I'm uh, so, uh, you know, keeping so close to my heart and check if it is actually real. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it was a great learning experience, though I'm of the opinion that anything which is sustainable, anything which is not plundering Mother Earth, so I'm for it. And um, a very new perspective to what uh, to a lot of new. I mean, I mean, for me, everything was new because I'm not into this at all. So I learned a lot and um, I'm flooded with questions, but I will take a three, four and um, uh, starting the first one. OK, um, so uh, are there any key do organizations? Want to, do you want, uh, Anupama, do you want me to stop with the presentation? So that we can see okay. the face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Uh, yeah. So. Cool. Uh, do um, which organizations normally um, you know own these lab-grown uh, uh, you know uh, diamonds? Any particular ones or? Uh... No. Right. Right now, let's say that that started like a, a chemist uh, reaction. At the time, we were willing to be drilling. So uh, you are exploring uh, oil uh, offshore and you want to drill under the sea. You need to be having diamonds, synthetic diamonds, in order to be cutting exactly the way you use it for tiles. So that was lousy. And then the, the idea came from, let's say, uh, five to ten friends of mine. One has been leading um, Beaumont Mercier, IWC, Poiré, so he is really a big shark of the luxury activities. And he came to me saying, OK, why don't we launch a company in that field? I said, OK, you launch. I won't be joining because, sorry, I want to stay alone as an individual and to be having my freedom of speech. But I strongly believe in the project. So some dreamers have been making this, knowing the fact they were to fight against the bears, which had a 100 years old uh, monopoly and okay. which has been killing people and uh, everything you can see in the movie. <clears throat> so it started like this and then um, making it becoming uh, coherent to uh, to the Gen Z people. They have been teaching to the old people you should be buying a sustainable diamond. So uh, instead of having uh, the, the virtual cycle, the way we're having it in electric uh, cars taught by old people to young people, the diamond industry in that sustainable way, uh, field has been taught by Gen Z to old people which is something which is to me definitely um, attractive. And uh, and then the organization uh, nowadays are, I would say, non-profit driven for most of them, 80. Uh, and then the, there are three which are fighting for it. And of course, the Bears is willing to go back on track and to be making money out of it. <laughs> OK. Um, uh, so this one is interesting. I'm sure it's one of the girls throwing in. Um, as a buyer in an unorganized jewelry market of India, how can a buyer know if I'm purchasing a lab-grown diamond or a natural one? <laughs> money for value and value for money, Indian style. <laughs> Don't get divorced with your husband now. <laughs> now, uh, from an X-ray analysis, um, it's more than difficult to identify the, the difference. Uh, the one only thing today is for most of the big ones, the lab grown are lacking purity in comparison to the natural one. That's the one only thing we can say. But from a crystallization point of view, as I told you, there's no difference. Definitely not. And um, sorry, but I was taught, maybe I'm old, but I was taught when we buy diamonds, what we buy above all is the light they will be retransmitting. So due to this, uh, the one and only thing which could be changing the, the rules would be the quality of the light, which could be getting reflected by synthetic diamonds. And there too, sorry, I can be playing with diamonds. I can be changing a little bit the, their mirrors uh, orientations in order to be getting the best of, um, of this. So uh, the, the latest cut for a way to cut a diamond is called uh, Trillion. The, which is a, a triangular one with more facets in order to reflect the light from the bottom of the, from the table, from the bottom of the, uh, of the stone. Uh, and then we are having the million cut, which is uh, the one which has uh, been bought by Kim Kardashian for her uh, 
lousy $5 million uh, diamond. Oh, wonderful. Ivan, Ivan yeah. I'm just going to intervene here. What about GIA certification of the natural Wait, diamond? And does GIA also certify yeah. lab grown diamonds and yeah. the natural diamonds as the same certification? Same certification. The one and only thing which needs to be added, which is already existing for some stones, you just add whether it has been treated, heated, cooked. Um, so, for, sorry, but tanzanite, for example, all of them are synthetic uh, because all of them we need to uh, eat them with a lack of oxygen in order to be getting the real color of the stone. So it's exactly the same as if we were to be buying mushrooms, uh, cooked or non-cooked. Sorry, which one do you like? The one which has been cooked is, is supposed to be having better taste. So um, with this bad joke, the gemmology certificate is looking exactly the same. The one only uh, additional line on it will be a synthetic one. All right, um, there's this one question which is uh, which uh, uh, and then there are a couple of students who have raised their hands, but this is one question which is close to my heart. So um, uh, this is what I'll ask. Um, it is, is luxury compatible with sustainability, especially in gemstones? And can can sustainable luxury be an ethical luxury? This is something okay. which I'm very interested in. Okay, so le let me, you know, I'm uh, <clears throat> sorry, I, I was born Catholic. And uh, my sister's, unfortunately for her, is called Eve. So Eve is the one who has been given an, an apple to the man, OK? That's written why, paradise, hell, and so on. So um, Catholic people, we are always guilty. We feel guiltiness, OK? Uh, much more than Indian people. So due to this guiltiness, luxury should be unfair by essence, right? And the big need is to be adding the fairness part of to luxury so as i've been mentioning it uh, if we are able to be overcharging people when buying so that they could be paying more for giving back to the poor a kind of zoroastrian uh, approach of the of the market then sorry luxury can be fully sustainable and because on the one hand, you will be getting enough profits very fast so that you could be injecting this money to the upgrading uh, approach of your processes so that all of them could be becoming sustainable. Because uh, same as if you were to be banning pesticides from India, I'm not sure farmers in the rural areas could be keeping on surviving. So sustainability could be killing them. So the one and only way to me uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, economic approaches and uh, normally balanced approaches should be to be overcharging people who are ready to be uh, sustainable, hoping they will be somewhere teaching, creating a kind of snowball, reaching a critical mass so that everybody would be saying, OK, we want it sustainable and go to hell with money, which is not sustainable, which is what has been done for many activities. But there in the jewelry sector, we've got a wonderful opportunity to make it very fast. Um, we can make it within five years. A great perspective. I never thought of, you know, that guilt that was associated. So I, I think that that and so it would be. Now you know why I'm guilty. <laughs> At least it would make sense to uh, overcharge people who can afford it. And then maybe uh, you uh, I, I think it's brought a great perspective to my um, I mean, I've got a new perspective. So I've got a Molly uh, Pandey also raising her hand, so I'll just um, let her ask. And there's one more student who had asked for rights, so can All they right. just raise your hand? So I'll give you the mic. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, very uh, like good afternoon to you, sir. First of all, I would like to say I'm like uh, I'm very lucky to be a part of this session. So, sir, my question is, uh, LGD seem to be better for the environment as it could lead to end of mining and maybe the need of blood diamonds. So, sir, the question is, why is it not being promoted and encouraged by nations then? <laughs> Sorry, I've been a politician when I was 30 years old and luckily I'm not anymore. Um, I don't know how you believe, how strongly you believe in the United Nations, okay? But uh, the United Nations have been already part of the diamond world 
Uh, at the moment, they were supposed to be preventing smuggling parallel markets and gray markets, uh, especially for the blood diamond uh, history. Um, diamonds are so uh, expensive and um, making money quick and so small, uh, smugglers can be selling them at a cheaper price, uh, price just for buying guns. So the United Nations have been passing the what they call the Kimberley Act and the Interlaken de declarations in order to be banning blood diamonds from Earth. Uh, sorry, I've been living in Africa. I've been going down in the mines, uh, even if I'm told uh, I know how it is uh, when you are going 200 meters deep. So mining is unsustainable. It's crazy to mine. Uh, you just have to, to look on the web, uh, the, the so-called Kimberley mine, which has been the very first owned by uh, and operated by the bears. Uh, it's a crazy gap on Earth now. It's lived, left like this and it won't ever be uh, becoming uh, normal within uh, thousands of years. So that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, the United Nations, if they are uh, forcing this, they should be thinking about the CO2 emissions for everything. And um, I much better believe in small companies and small dreamers believing in, so that was part of the first sentence Anupama has been reading, better to be one and only in the beginning, hoping you might be clothing people, clusterizing people, having the same mindset and the same values. And then when the value will be becoming predominant, you don't care whether people believe in uh, in the same one or, uh, or not. They will be in line with it. So it's a kind of complete discipline to be uh, teaching uh, to, to consumers. Was I clear with my answer? Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm, and if, I'm if I could just add to, sorry, doctor, if I could no, just no, add to what you said, uh, one of the reasons would be that, you know, uh, business houses, they would not educate people enough that whether this is a lab grown diamond, which is half the price from a natural diamond. And they will start selling lab grown diamonds at the price of natural diamonds. Again, promoting the whole idea of capitalism, which you know, mm. lab grown diamonds is what uh, it's trying to avoid. Mm. Yeah, you got my point. And that's the reason why we have been pushing the GIA to be getting exactly the same kind of certificates with only one additional mention. They have been fighting against, but uh, sorry, now it's in the case. Uh, is Sarang with uh, Sarang still interested in asking that question? I've given you mic rights. Else, um, Ivan, um, um, it has been such a wonderful, um, you know, I've loved your session. I, I had no idea what I was getting into because luxury and all this marketing, etc., is way beyond what I do. But um, wonderful. I've learned such a lot today and I hope a lot of people, um, you know, uh, all the students and uh, we've, we've crossed 250 students. Um, all of us are going back with new perspective. I'm, I'm, too, I'm truly, I mean, enriched, really. Dr. Auja, you wanted to say something. I just wanted to thank Professor Ivan. A lovely perspective, very different from what you shared with us the last time you were here. And uh, definitely look forward uh, to having you with us in February. Okay, yes. not worry, Vandana. I owe you this, uh, especially because thanks to you, to Anapuma, to uh, Shubham. Uh, um, and this guy's name is Vinamra Jain. First of all, the honor you've been giving me last year, you see what I mean, so I will never say thanks enough. And the second thing is I, I strongly believe in this kind of approach of luxury. So I'm, I'm not a luxury man. Uh, you know how I'm clad, how I'm teaching. Uh, I'm not, um, how should I say this? Snobbish, okay? Um, luxury to me is uh, exactly what you are in India. When you are going to buy a full carry, you know what you buy. So that's luxury, sorry. It's not a matter of brand, money, uh, price to be sell. Sorry, luxury is not this. Luxury is knowing, loving, admiring, and keeping on loving. Uh, if it is only a shorter money-making activity, then for sure it's bullshitting. And luxury in this case is uh, even worse than fashion because not only you will have a short lifespan of the products, but you will also have a short lifespan of the brands. So luxury is love luxury today and love it forever because out of three products, 
three experiences, you may be uh, spending a wonderful life. You don't need to have so many luxury things. Thank you. Over to you, Ivan, Dr. Ivan, I just one last line. Uh, I've been I've loved your lecture so much. Uh, please, um, uh, I mean, you know, in management, they say the reward of doing good work is more work. So please look uh, forward to I mean, please look out actually for a lot of invitations from our side because I'm sure the students have loved you. You know one thing, uh, I've been uh, write, uh, writing many books with sustainability without talking about them. And then Springer has been coming to me saying, OK, we want you to be heading the collection. So sustainability in the luxury world is something I've been believing for 10 years, which is crazy because I'm the one and only chemist to work, the, to work in luxury. So uh, okay. chemists are, maybe chemists are guilty too. So that's the reason why I'm sustainable. <laughs> yeah, because uh, um, a personal perspective, definitely. I'm sure all the marketeers here will hate me for this. But personal <laughs> perspective, I do not believe in plundering Mother Earth for my for my gains. So I vowed not to buy any more, uh, you know, uh, clothes or things like that, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary, because I know that I'm leaving, already leaving a huge carbon footprint for all the car that I drive yep. and Upcycling, upcycling so is better. Can, yeah, uh, yeah I was just about to say that, you know, cycling is a better option. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, whatever, uh, whatever little I can vehicles. do in my way. Yeah. So um, 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 I think um, uh, we need to now sign off. And uh, yeah. Rupert, <laughs> can you please um, do the formal uh, thank you? And I really, um, again, once more, once more personally and on behalf of the Amity Business School family, uh, I extend my absolute uh, heartfelt gratitude because I've really enjoyed the lecture. You know, everything should be seen from a sustainable and a more a sensible uh, perspective than just plundering and, uh, you know, uh, consuming, I think is the word. Though I'm sure I'm in the wrong forum with all the marketeers hating for what I'm just saying. Anyway, over to you. Uh, you just have to kill Philip Cutler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm in the wrong forum. <laughs> but we'll just have to let it go. Uh, all right, uh, Rupert, over to you, please. On behalf of all present here, I express our deepest gratitude and accolade towards Dr. Ivan sir for taking out his prestigious time to be the part of the acclaimed lecture series. We also request the audience to join us on 2nd December for a similar illuminating session of the mega international lecture series by Mr. Tom Lowe, director at the Center of Student Engagement. Amity Business School will organize the 7th Global Leadership Research Conference on leading in the new reality insights into action, which will be held on 16 to 18 February 2022. GLRC 2022 is a platform where management scholars, researchers, academicians and industry experts come together to share their collective experience about their groundbreaking outcomes of research across diverse management domains, along with the subsequent contribution to the building of a theory in the field of management. We hope to see you all there. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you, Ivan. Once more. Thank you. See you in February. Kisses. Absolutely. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye.